Hello everyone, welcome back. This is TechMatic. Thank you for sharing your time with me today. In today's video, we're going to be talking about my build for my character that I utilize in order to go ahead and kind of emphasize on survival as well as uh, mobility and healing for myself. The foods that I use, the spells that I have, and the weapons that I utilize. So let's go ahead and jump right into the talent tree itself and take a look. So you're not going to be using any of these talents first off and foremost. If you're going for a wizard build and you're going to find wands early on in the game, I suggest going battle mage right away. Battle mage will go ahead and uh, we'll focus on getting every point of intelligence we can, whether that be from flame upgrades to your personal base to utilizing foods. And of course, you know, maxing out all the levels, uh, level 25, as well as getting all the shroud roots. So shroud roots are really important in this build because it's basically every talent point that is available to us in this early access version of um, and shrouded and uh, we're going to be going into arcane deflection after that it's not really important these there's going to be a lot of in the way spell um, not spells but talents so we're going to grab that so that we can grab intelligence and of course unity we don't really care about it uh, mana regeneration it really isn't going to be a thing because you're going to be utilizing a lot of wands in this build uh, wand damage is going to be increased significantly especially when you have the chance to spawn an additional projectile as well as repeated stings uh, from your wands, which will increase your damage by 20%. And then, of course, spirit to get the intelligence point down here. The next thing I want to talk about is more of a mobility uh, talent tree within Trickster. And, of course, we're grabbing all the intelligence here. So we're going to grab spirit because it's in the way. Counter Strike is really good because it deals 50% um, of the damage back uh, and is reflected to the attacker. It's really good, especially with fire damage, and then uh, we're going to forgo using ice uh, wands or ice spells in general. But we also want to go ahead and grab updraft. So updraft will go ahead and kind of get you, if you're coming in, you know, to a ledge and you don't really have the extra oomph or you don't know if you can land in the kind of like uh, cheese your way up, you can just go ahead and hit updraft and it'll actually throw you higher than an actual point uh, for a... I think it's like about a two and a half second animation. So really good to have, really good for mobility. The next thing that we're going to go ahead and take a look at is the intelligence point. And then of course, be gone. Be gone is really good in those situational areas where you actually have an enemy running towards you. You can unequip your weapon and go ahead and punch them to actually push them back. It is going to cost you 30 mana, but it's really good. Uh, and then of course, we're going to grab the last uh, intelligence point in the trickster tree. The next cross-section point that we can go ahead and grab is Quick Charge. So Quick Charge is really good for things like Acid Bite. Acid Bite and some of your eternal spells take a really long time to cast. And having that, uh, especially coupled with the Weaver Staff that I found, you can go ahead and check the video out. It's going to be in the cards. Um, you can go ahead and pick up that Staff and utilize it with this build with Acid Bite. And this is going to make your life a whole lot uh, easier, especially with a devastating spell like this that can kill anything one shot in the game, especially if you have this much intelligence as well. So, going on into the next tree is Survivor. Now, I have this for a number of reasons, but we're going to go ahead and take a look at each one. So, of course, endurance and stamina. Stamina is really important, especially if you're trying to kite something and you know you need that stamina in order to go ahead and maintain a safe distance. Of course, Runner adds 10% movement speed to your character, and Double Jump is significantly important in a lot of different areas, um, and saves your ass uh, most of the time. Um, being able to double jump onto a platform and then have enemies kind of stuck there for the moment, um, it'll give you kind of like the ability to pop a potion or do something like that. Endurance, of course, more stamina. Wanderlust is really good, but it isn't one of those uh, in-the-way talents. I don't think I've ever found myself running um, solely on a road for this talent to be working. I think Wanderlust should be reworked. So devs at Keen, if you guys are uh, taking a look at this, go ahead and change this, please, to something else. Uh, good metabolism, really good, but I don't think anyone really utilizes health or mana orbs at all. I don't ever use them or have ever experimented with them but the mana and health potion restore for 20% more is actually really good and of course rebound 
So while, you, while you're kiting things away and while you're doing everything that you need to do, you also need to have uh, stamina regeneration kick in and then this helps it a lot more, especially accompanied with the next talent, which is Sweet Tooth. The stamina regeneration of sweets is increased by 50%, so that's going to give you an extra half of whatever you're eating that is a sweet and regen your um, stamina that much faster and for a longer duration. Dexterity in the way point. And of course, Dessert Stomach. Dessert Stomach is usually there for the sweets that you're going to be utilizing in this build because you're going to be kind of uh, emphasizing your combat and playstyle as if though you were in a raid dungeon and you shouldn't be standing in fire, you shouldn't be standing in, you know, anything that's hazardous and being able to move out of the way. Uh, a lot of your healing is not going to be by potions, it's going to be taken care of by the healer tree. And inside of the healer tree, we're going to grab intelligence as well as healer and healer 2. This is going to give us 30% extra healing, uh, which is going to be really nice when it's accompanied with more intelligence. And this intelligence is going to be converted into healing over time. So this heal over time activates whenever you take any damage, whether it be fall or from enemy, and you'll be able to go ahead and recover two full. And with the extra stamina regeneration there that you have, you're going to be pretty much topped off at all times. And uh, you'll be storing dozens and dozens of uh, health potions away like I do. The next thing is Healing Revive. And this is just one of those in the way, but it does help out if you're playing with friends. And of course, Intelligence and Martyr. Again, one of those uh, group utilities that you have right there. But you want to get Exalted because you're eventually going to level up your base to level 3 and you get a free 3 intelligence with this. I know it does cost 5 points, but you know, just just for it being there and you being overpowered as a caster is really what it's all about. So the last tree that we're going to go into is going to be our wizard tree, and I'll explain why we have a lot of this stuff here. So spirit, of course, because it's in the way, and of course, this is the way. Uh, we're going to get this talent, and it's going to give us 10% increase uh, to all damage so that's going to be fire ice lightning and of course shroud damage we also want to go ahead and grab arsonist and we're going to grab pyromaniac for the extra 30 percent so you couple that with counter strike which is a fire um damage 50 percent reflecting of that with 30 percent more extra damage that's really nice especially with the fire wand which is really good for shroud enemies and then, of course, we're going to go grab Thunder and Lightning, which give us 30% more extra damage. On top of all this stuff, we have 20% damage here. We So we got 50% extra damage going on with just all these little things clicked off over here. <clears throat> so we got, grab our next intelligence point, and then we go into Wizard, which, you know, critical hit chance increased by 10%. And then, of course, eventually you're going to find a Helix, which is going to be a really good Shroud Wand, and I'll explain these two weapons uh, a little bit later. But Dark Arts for 10% more Shroud Damage, and then, of course, Abyss for 20% additional Shroud Damage. And then we've got Chain Hit. So Chain Hit's really good. You know, it hits the next um, enemy in line, and it does 5 Shock Damage per Intelligence Points. Again, emphasis on utilizing... Uh, as much intelligence as possible. Mass destruction basically lights up an entire area whenever I get a critical strike and it pulls all enemies towards me. This gives me the ability to open up with a fast cast acid bite in order to go ahead and obliterate everything that's in the area. Really useful to have even though it does to uh, shock per uh, intelligence. It's fine. And then of course intelligence, uh, increase your intelligence by one and that's the last point that we're going to be grabbing. I do have a couple of uh, points into gear quality and mason. So these two, basically, you're going to be doing a lot of mining in the end game. You're going to be gathering a lot of materials to build your base. And it's just, you know, some things to have there. You could throw it into constitution if you really want to. I myself would have probably thrown it into constitution, shiny plates, and then, of course, heavy plates. Um, you don't really need any of these, but you do have another constitution point there, so, you know, that's another route that you can go if you don't want to go, you know, into mining or doing anything like that. That's what I use. So, let's take a look at our food situation. Actually, let's take a look at our gear situation. So, the gear situation is pretty much our Archmage, 
Uh, gloves, boots, and hat. These all give you varying stats. There's a lot of redundancy. Um, again, this is 9% damage against magical foes. Again, King Games, you guys got to rework that so that they take 9 Everyone takes 9% magical damage regardless. That would be very helpful. Um, and of course, we got Elder Chest. The Elder Chest gives you 120 health and 96 mana versus the Spellbinder uh, chest piece. And everything looks pretty cool for the most part. So we actually look like a high elf from uh, World of Warcraft. Uh, as far as um, our shield is concerned, Ethereal Plane, again, I've, this is probably like the eighth one that I've picked up in the entire game time that I've spent, as well as uh, Wolf Snarl. Just have a bow there so that you can pull things closer to you and initiate the battle. I do not know where I got these rings, but they're really good, especially with the four mana regeneration. And then, of course, 30 mana, 30 health right there. But the next piece that everyone should grab is either the Deerstalker Crafted Legs or these Eagle Eye Trousers, which give you 18 stamina and one sprint speed. So sprint speed is really good, especially when you're trying to kite uh, enemies and then you want to go ahead and, um, you know, have extra stamina left over there. It's really good. Every class should be utilizing some version of these pants. Again, Deerstalker is crafted and Eagle Eye Trousers are found. The next thing we're going to talk about is food. So for right now, there's a number of different foods out there. There is a food that you can eat beyond these mushrooms here that give you four intelligence and some constitution. But there's also, um, uh, what is it, the requirement for having a lot of eggs for that recipe. I think it's like three eggs and, um, you know, the mushrooms that you get in the beginner area, those red mushrooms, you can combine those together to go ahead and create a good intelligence food. But... You know, for just running around and exploring, not really killing bosses, I utilize these mushrooms that are found in caves all over the place. Uh, the next food that you're going to want, especially with something like Healing Aura, is going to be this fruit bowl. Um, the recipe is available once you find the yucca fruit itself, which looks like this and is found on trees. In the red desert, sand desert area, you can go ahead and cut down trees and get this fruit. It drops, it's pretty plentiful actually, it drops like four or sometimes eight per tree. So it's really good to pick up and um, hook into a fruit bowl, which gives you six health regen and of course three stamina recharge. Uh, this is a really easy soup to make and four constitution goes a long way. Really nice to have. Uh, if you haven't seen my um, cooked better food video, go ahead and check it out. I'll go ahead and show you where to find all the pieces like the almanac and of course the beehive uh, smoke things that you can create your own honey and stuff like that. It's really good to have. But then we also have grilled yucca fruit. Super simple. Uh, doesn't require much, but it does give you 20 uh, stamina recharge for 7 minutes versus a sugar cane, which is 15 stamina recharge for 3 minutes. So last that extra bit, especially when you're running around in the boss fight. Really nice to have. So the next weapons that we're going to talk about is the Shroud Weaver. I found this uh, just kind of laying on a cliff edge and uh, found the whole story behind it but then I noticed that this weapon is level 35 uh, when you upgrade it all the way and it's really really nice to have couples well with fire spells but it is really devastating with acid bite you got 62 power here you'll get it at level 30 and then it'll well not at level 30 you'll find it the item itself at level 30 but you'll be 25 if you know what I'm saying so you can go ahead and upgrade this. It's going to show level 35 and eventually, you know, you're going to be util utilizing this in just kind of those niche situations where you have a bunch of enemies grouped up and you want to acid bite everything down. Very good to have. The next weapon that we're going to take a look at is our electrical wand. And this is special for a reason here. So you're going to find a number of different wands and they're going to add like defenses to different elements. They're going to add defenses to physical or they might just say you know give plus to fire and ice and lightning but this one gives nothing but shock damage so this is going to be actually really useful especially with something like the extra projectile and everything uh like that it's really useful to have a weapon that focuses primarily on one stat that goes for the helix as well. The helix itself does a ton of shroud damage and it's really good against any other enemy except shroud enemies. So when we're going into the um, shroud area, we want to go ahead and utilize Luminous Wand. 
Um, again, it does a decent amount of different things like shroud magic resistance, but it's primarily there to burn basic uh, shroud enemies. Really good to have. And then our spells that we have, you will find a ice eternal bolt, but it's going to despawn. There's some bug with it where every time you log out, it despawns from your bag and you have to go run back to that tomb to find it. Uh, I believe the tomb itself is found right below this. It's located. I'm not sure. I think it's in this tomb or this tomb. Nope. It's somewhere around here. I think it's either this one or, nope, I think it's that one. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Let's go back to our spells. So we do have Eternal Fireball, which does 114 damage. Has a cast time of two seconds, but of course, you know, we get that extra 50% cast charge, so it's one second. And then of course we've got Eternal Acid Bite, which is extremely powerful. This thing can hit words up to like uh, 900 to 1000, uh, especially depending on what kind of food buffs you have. And then of course we've got Eternal Light Burst, does 21 damage, uh, has a 0.8 cast time. But then we also have Eternal Chain Heal here, which does 35, and of course, 9 mana cast. These are pretty much the things that you're going to utilize. This is really cool, but people have to be, I mean, enemies have to be really, really close in order to use it. I'm talking like that close in order to go ahead and use it. But in order to go ahead and demonstrate, I have some little furry guys that are going to kind of show us what this damage looks like. And we're going to go ahead and eat our food. Kind of show you what all our buffs are doing so we have the extra food now let's go ahead and 238 and we have 466 and 230 something how slow that projectile is compared to the helix but yeah everything pretty much uh Yeah, that thing will burn stuff for like 400 damage and then some. So if you're looking at the um, uh, Vuka, what is it, Hulk, Brawling Hulk, it'll one-shot that thing. It'll one-shot the uh, big lady spewing acid boss. It'll one-shot anything in the game, including the uh, bosses that you fight in uh, Pike's Head. So, yep. That's just my build that I utilize, and if we go ahead and jump off something, I'll kind of show you what that damage reduction looks like. So we get 13%, and it's just going to heal. It's going to do its thing. And of course, we do have a food that's helping out with this, so those numbers aren't calculated into there. And if we take a look at our health, we see that we have 700 health. So... That's my build. I hope you guys use it, enjoy it, and uh, you can go ahead and iterate on it, do whatever you want. It's your game. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment. I do have a Patreon available if you guys are interested in checking out some of my artwork or downloading some of the saves for the games that I play. I do plan on putting some of the maps that I worked on into that, but uh, yeah, that's it for now. Thank you guys. Have a nice day, and we'll see you in the next one.